Hey, what's up folks? It's Jesse with Keeping Real Finance, the channel that always has your back and tells it like it is. Well, in this week's video, you wanted volatility, you definitely got it. So we got scammers, we got FUD, we got giveaways, we got a big uh, clearing of the air from Hara. Uh, a lot of different things happened this past week and there was a lot to talk about. So I've got a video that's full of all kinds of items, as well as I'll be giving you my thoughts on each of them. Um, we're going to wrap this video up, um, as we always do, with some final thoughts where I'll try to bring it on home on kind of what I think it all means and, and what the bigger picture is, right? I think that's really important in this week because there's so much volatility. So, if you enjoy this week's video, as always, make sure to hit the like button. If this is your first time on the channel, make sure to subscribe. And if you click the bell, you'll be made aware whenever I post time-sensitive content just like this. And now, let's get it going. Check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two, going live in five, four, three, two, one, and blast off. What is up, everybody? This is Jesse back with your Friday weekly update on this very fabulous FUD storm Friday. I'll tell you what, um, there is a lot of volatility going on right now, a lot of a lot of FUD out there in the market. Uh, the Jasmine... Um, feed this week. We, we got a little bit of everything in here in terms of uh, some, some highs, some lows, some clear in the air, all the above. Uh, we're going to be taking a good look at all that information um, as well as we'll take a look over at uh, coin market cap and the chart and kind of see what's going on. All right. So stick around for all that. So we're kicking it off right here with the um, Jasmine Spaces call that we did uh, last Sunday. Had a really good call on that one. We did a lot of talking about the uh, Travala and the Booking.com partnership. So if you haven't had a chance to listen to that, I definitely recommend uh, giving it a listen. Um, you know, something I've also been thinking about doing is maybe starting to post some of those on YouTube, which uh, to date we really haven't done at all. So I don't know if there's, you know, anybody that wants, wants that on YouTube or if you'd rather just listen to it on Twitter or whatever. Uh, but let me know if you do, and maybe maybe I'll look into that. Um, moving on up from there, this was kind of funny. So uh, CZ said, you know, it's not how early you get in, it's how long you can hold. 100% true. Look at this guy. And this this guy here, he is still on Twitter. Uh, wish I had kept my 1,700 Bitcoin uh, at 0 0.06 instead of selling them at 0 0.30, right? Uh, now that they're $8. <laughs> That kind of sums it up, right? Uh, you know, that it, it's it's the whole timing the market thing, which is nearly impossible. So just like you DCA into any, any you know, cryptocurrency, stock, whatever, uh, it's almost like the same process of laddering out of it at some point in time, right? That's kind of what you do. Or you could just be one of those people that simply holds Bitcoin. Um, there's a lot of them out there that are exactly like that. And, you know, I brought this up before that a lot of these guys that, you know, you follow them on Twitter, you follow all these, you know, chartists and technical analysis, yada, yada. And ultimately, the ones who have done really well with Bitcoin simply bought it and held it. That's it. They bought and held. And so um, a lot of them are still holding. Right. And then you've got, you know, other people who have come on board since. So anyways, moving on. But I think. What I want to say there is it's nearly impossible to time the market. So going on up from there, this is just a recap of that call to play the recording. So that's posted here on uh, my page, as well as uh, Jasmine US had uh, posted it. Moving on up. So our buddy Dip Metaverse. So Dip Metaverse, circulating supply update, 170 million allocated to ecosystem was added. This was on uh, February 26th, so a couple days ago. Total circulating supply is 95.15% of max supply. This is the remaining coins, 2.4 billion incentive and 30 million for the ecosystem. That's it. So this thing is basically all but completely out there. Um, so what that means is that when the real run starts, uh, Jasmine is going to move big time. All right. Now going on up from there, I had multiple people reach out to me this past week regarding these Twitter 
scammers uh, impersonating my account. So, um, you know, a lot of the times they'll, they'll spell finance wrong. They use these underscores and weird areas. Uh, you'll notice my account doesn't have any underscores at all. It also spells finance correctly. <laughs> um, but there has been a lot of them and, and it's not just one there. There was like five, 10 of them just this past week alone. Uh, I've mentioned it before also with YouTube in particular, that if you're leaving me a comment on there, if you get any kind of follow-up, that's like, Hey, yeah, reach out to me, G you know, give me a call back, call my WhatsApp number. That's not me. That is all bots. I have probably hidden upwards of well over a thousand of these in the YouTube comments and every single week. There's another one in there. There's more. It's it's a rampant problem that's in YouTube and it's in Twitter. Now, the difference, though, is where YouTube, they seem to be automated bots. On Twitter, they seem to possibly be real people because I've had numerous people reach out and say, yeah, you messaged me and started talking to me about this and that and whatever. I'm like, no, that wasn't me. Um, I even had somebody who said that they invested in my exchange. I don't have an exchange. And, uh, you know, that person uh, was definitely taken advantage of and lost some of their funds, which totally sucks, right? So uh, bottom line here is be extremely careful. I am never going to message you directly. I am never going to ask you for money. I'm never going to ask you to invest in my exchange. The only way that uh, I, I'm ever going to do anything along any of those lines is say that, hey, if you want to support the channel, Here's my links in the video. Here's my website. That's it. Do not ever talk to any of these people that pretend to be me. If you reach out to me, that's one thing. I'll, I'll happily talk to you, whatever. Uh, but I very rarely reach out outside of this account. So just please be mindful and do not send anybody any money ever. All right. Moving on up. So on the, uh, Travala announcement that we had last week, part of that was a promotional giveaway and they announced the uh, three winners. So uh, we got uh, Tapia Shib Texas, um, Crypto Kugila 37, right? And then we also had JBS 14 Marine, Jasmine Johnny, and uh, quite a few of you guys, you know, I've definitely seen here on Twitter. So super cool to uh, have people in the community uh, uh, getting some uh, giveaway rewards there. So that was kind of a bit of a theme this week also, a couple giveaways going on that were actually real, uh, not the fake ones. Again, we also had some scammer giveaways on, uh, I think, Telegram, and there was another, there's been one on YouTube. Uh, there was another one somewhere else I talked about last week. Anyway, lots of scammers. But this was an official actual giveaway through uh, Travala and Jasmine through that partnership that was announced. Moving on up from there, I did want to show this. So this was uh, Plan B had posted this, uh, and it says adoption of technology in the U.S. 1900 to present. Right. So let me kind of zoom in on this, so you can see all these different like types of technology: electricity, air travel, PC, HD TV, yada yada yada. And then as one of these, they have is uh, Bitcoin. Right. And Bitcoin's just this little line right here. And most of the new ones, they all are kind of somewhere near 50% adoption, right? Eventually, uh, just about all of them get way up here to, you know, right, let's say about 90% on average. Some of them even get even higher than that, like 98, 99%. Bitcoin is all the way down here. Um, so in terms of how far Bitcoin has to go to to be adopted as, you know, kind of a core technology like this, it's it's got quite a ways to go, which really shows you, you know, the whole point of this chart is to say, look at how early we really are. And I know everybody kind of hates hearing that because it's like, are we ever going to get there? Yeah, we will, but it's just going to take time, you know. Um, Bitcoin is kind of like, you know, every one of these increments is a 10-year increment. And look at some of them. I mean, they, they kind of just go sideways, then they take off. I think that um, Bitcoin could probably be somewhat like that, where it, it's really just going to be a challenge because of the 
laws and regulations all around the world, uh, the various government crackdowns, you know, all that stuff kind of messes with this. And it's not a simple adoption like some of these other ones, like something like radio, for example. That's that's pretty easy, you know. Color TV, that's a really easy thing to adopt. Bitcoin is a little bit more challenging because it's also, you know, a, a currency, right? So anyhow, just wanted to share that with everybody. Now, moving on up from there, uh, we have this horror post here, Jasmine USDT, that's a Tether trading pairs now in full trading mode on Coinbase Exchange and Coinbase Pro. So that was a bit of announcement that came out. Then we had uh, this big announcement here dropped by uh, Tycho. Tycho over there at the uh, Jasmine International Discord and uh, IC Amphibian retweeted it. Essentially that uh, Tycho and the Jasmine International Discord has landed a March AMA with the team. So that's really awesome, right? So if you got any questions at all, definitely get them into the uh, Discord. Uh, there's a whole section there that kind of shows you, um, you know, where those questions are. Obviously, certain people kind of have priority in that international discord. But the more you get the question out there, you know, maybe the right person asks it, and then uh, we can kind of take it from there. So uh, that should be coming up around the corner. As I get more details on that, I will definitely share that with everybody here on the channel. So you know exactly when that uh, discord AMA will be going on. Um, I, I have seen a few people like, I, I guess it won't be on video. Probably not. You know why? Because Tycho's in California. Jasmine is in uh, Japan, right? Uh, we've also got language barriers, English, Japanese. It's, it's a little bit challenging to do this in person without actually going to Japan. So maybe at some point we could do an AMA where, you know, we... we go to Japan. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Maybe we do something like that. But uh, in the meantime, um, there will be that AMA most likely with Hara as he does the vast majority of these, of these uh, AMAs. So stay tuned for that. Moving on up. So here was a chart posted by uh, Charlie Bolello. If you don't follow Charlie, he is on uh, Twitter. And um, Charlie has a lot of uh, really good posts like this that that kind of show historical data and sort of tracking percentage changes, et cetera, right? And so this one right here is the Bitcoin returns from 2010 till now. Look at that first year. I mean, holy crap, right? The, talk about just a colossal year on Bitcoin. But moving forward from there, 2014 was a down year. We had three years up. 2018 was a down year. We had three years up. 2022 um, was a uh, down year, and uh, so far we had been up. Um, I'm sure this uh, percentage here has uh, probably changed a little bit uh, with the recent uh, flood of this past week. Uh, but the bottom line is that uh, following this historical trend, um, it's likely, it's not 100%, nothing's a given, right? Um, if we learned that, you know, 2022 just kind of being the worst investment year ever. Uh, nothing's a given, but historically, this year and the following two years should be positive years for Bitcoin and crypto growth, right? Moving on up. So, Jasmine US, going to be starting off March with a bang. Keep your eyes peeled tomorrow night for our official Jasmine giveaway announcement, right? So, this was pretty cool. So, Jasmine US has partnered with uh, Mr. Patrick Schmidt. Uh, they're giving away up to $500 worth of Jasmine. So 10 Jasmine community members will receive $50 Jasmine each. All you have to do is uh, follow each of them, like, retweet, tag three friends, right? So uh, super awesome that they're doing that. I'll uh, click on this so you can kind of see more of the details here if you're on Twitter. Uh, but basically, they're selecting those 10 winners, and on March 10th, they'll announce uh, who that'll be. So this is a real giveaway. They are actually giving away up to $500 worth, which is uh, really commendable. So pretty awesome giving back to the community. Um, and that is uh, basically coming up here. Today's the third. So you got roughly about one more week uh, to do this if, if you want to join that one. So this one is a real one. All right. This is not a scam. All right. Moving on up. This was interesting. I didn't see this post coming. So Hara um, dropped this post just the other day on March 1st where he said, thank you for your support. I also apologize for the concern caused by the rumors. First of all, 
The rumors are not about Jasmine, but about a company called Bellwood Enterprises, which used to be the owner of Jasmine. Bellwood Enterprises, BWE. This, uh, this is because Jasmine is now owned solely by its management, all right? Now, number two from there, next, the situation of Bellwood Enterprises regarding the investigation by the FSA and the IRS is completely fake and not true. Although there is a fact that the company discussed with the tax office about the installment payment and executed it within the legal range, this article, uh, as if there was an enforcement investigation, is not credible at all. Jasmine is developing well, and we are beginning to release fund token applications and start production of blockchain PCs. We appreciate your continued support. So there was quite a lot in there to unpack. Um, so first of all, the article that Hara is referencing, I've tried looking for, and I can't even find it. So I'm not, I'm not sure if that was a Japan-specific article that came out. Um, I haven't seen it yet. I don't know if anybody in the community has seen it. If you do, you know, send it over to me. I'll take a look. Um, but I haven't even seen it. Now, I am well aware of uh, Bellwood, okay? So I've talked about this before. I did a video on ICO. You can Google it. You can Google Jasmine Bellwood, and you'll see my video there on the ICO. Um, basically what Bellwood was, was this is the former owner of Jasmine who basically, uh, helped to bankroll the company off of the ground, right? So one of my early questions that I always had with, with Jasmine was who bankrolled it? Uh, how did this come about, right? Somebody had to do that. And all accounts tie to Bellwood and a, uh, person named Masonori Suzuki, okay? So this is who bankrolled uh, Jasmine. Now, Jasmine is uh, named after Japan, Ando, Sato, and Masanobu Yoshida, okay? But Masanobu Yoshida was kind of like a hired gun, like a consultant brought in to help out, okay? Um, I think Ando is, is sort of the guiding light of this whole thing, the facilitator, and Sato is the guy who runs it, all right? So between the three of them, though, um, they were not originally the owner because they had to have somebody with deeper pockets essentially bankroll this thing off the ground. Now, you know, you could ask the question of, did they really need that? I mean, these guys were highly su successful. Um, probably not, but I think that in the world that they came from, the corporate world, you don't necessarily sink all of your personal assets into starting a new company, right? They're looking for investors. And that's exactly what they had here was one main investor who was basically the, the dominant owner of the company, okay? Um, now, something else with Jasmine is Jasmine is not um, a publicly traded company, right? This is a cryptocurrency. They're a private company. Um, but they are kind of giving you um, insights into the company here and there whenever they can, but they are not um, subject to the same dis disclosure, let's say, that you would have with like a publicly traded stock company. Okay. So anyhow, the story with Bellwood and the ICO FUD rumors, just to rehash this a little bit, was essentially um, there was an account here on Twitter that was spreading this rumor day in, day out, multiple posts every day uh, that roughly said they had an ICO. I gave them a bunch of money through a friend of mine and I never got coins in return. So in other words, they said they invested in Jasmine. They were promised coins through an ICO and they never got those coins. That was the whole FUD. Okay. Um, now, what we've been able to find, so, and, and I say we loosely, it's mainly Brian, it's mainly Dip Metaverse, uh, me a little bit, but nowhere near to the extent of those guys. So those guys have done significant research on this, is that we've never actually found any credible proof anywhere that there was an actual ICO, an initial coin offering. Now, Jasme also put a disclaimer on their website, if you go to their website and you scroll all the way to the bottom, it's down there, a disclaimer. Now, what's interesting in the disclaimer, actually, 
is that it says if you got any questions or whatever, you know, reach out to the following address. And it's actually a BWE address. If you try to go to that website, there's like nothing there, right? So that's probably something they need to update in the website and remove that email address altogether now that Bellwood is no longer an owner, okay? Um, but there was no ICO. There never was. They also, um, for the duration of the project, have been repped by the largest fintech law firm in Japan, okay? This is where they stay compliant with securities laws is that they never conducted an ICO. There was no ICO. Now, what there could have been, and this by all accounts seems 100% um, possible, is a bad actor uh, who somehow had a connection to Bellwood, okay? That's the part that there, there's, there's something a little shady there where there's a bad actor that had a connection to Bellwood and from that uh, supposedly conducted this ICO scam. Now, Bellwood itself never did anything wrong. Jasmine itself never did anything wrong. But the bad actor, uh, by all accounts, uh, did scam people, right? Just like we were talking about all these other scams here in the crypto space, that's exactly what happened. Now, Jasmine has said numerous times, hey, we never conducted an ICO. This wasn't us. And these other companies pretending to be us are not us. All right. So that's that's true. So that's that's kind of this this Bellwood angle. Now, zooming out from here, I mentioned this. So sometimes it's good to clear the air. So um, I talked about all three of these things here. Um, oh, this was the, the other big one I wanted to talk about. So the mixed marketing messages. So this was something that uh, in the life of Jasmine drove me crazy early on was this mixed messaging, right? The, the marketing just drove me crazy. Um, all these different websites, you know, the consistency, you know, you, you have to have one consistent voice uh, that's going out to the public, right? And maybe you have one voice for the retail person and maybe you have a different voice for the businesses, right? Um, but that drove me crazy. So my hunch, and, and this is just pure speculation here, I could be 100% wrong, but my hunch was that the mixed messages with Telegram, at one point there was like a weird Jasmine Telegram thing that came out, uh, it had tons of misspellings, looked totally shady and odd. Um, there was a Binance Academy article that specifically talked about the metaverse. Now, Jasmine has recently talked about the metaverse uh, in relation to the fun token, aka fan token, with Sagan Tosu. So the metaverse is coming. But uh, there were some um, uh, discussions that happened early on about Jasmine releasing the metaverse, and, you know, and then it like never happened and it just sort of uh, time moved on. And the interesting thing in that one was the official team never said anything about it ever. Uh, this was a different account that was talking about that, right? Um, then you have the Jasmine Global site. Again, which, what's the point of this site? Uh, it, it's it's kind of weird, the relationship between that site and the official site. And early on, the official site was really bad. And then they came out with the Jasmine Global site, maybe to market to like global investors or something. But in the meantime, the official site's gotten better and better and better and better. And now it looks it looks really good. So there, there isn't really a point to the Jasmine Global site that can't already be accomplished with the Japan site. So I do not understand why that site's even still open. But I think the reason it was originally created was, again, it tied back to Bellwood. And I, I think of it like this, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing, right? And so the left hand uh, with Jasmine is like the official team, right? If you follow the official team, the official messaging, the Jasmine management account, Hara's account, it's very pointed. It's very specific. They're, they're, they're really following their roadmap to a T, right? Um, if you start looking at these other accounts, they, they kind of bounce all over the place. And then the official accounts never really comment on what's going on over there, right? So it's sort of like this distraction, this mixed message that um, has been out there. And so the bottom line... In all of this here regarding Bellwood, uh, the biggest takeaway here is this one right here, first of all. Jasmine is now owned solely by its management. So Bellwood is no longer involved. That's a good thing, okay? 
because then we should get more consistent messaging and the team can do what they wanted to do all along. Okay, so that's really good. The next big takeaway that I, I found in here um, that I think Jasmine US had mentioned was this one right here about um, the release of fun token applications, S applications, right? So we only have one right now. We have Saganto Sue. But the Hokkaido Ballpark and the Nippon Ham Fighters uh, probably will have one of these here before we know it, okay? Um, and the second part of that was start production of blockchain PCs. This is the Avita partnership. This is the Vio partnership. That's absolutely massive. So we had some really important things that came out of this. Uh, what's interesting, like I said, is ultimately the actual article, the whatever triggered this from Hara, uh, he never even cited the article or, or you know directly commented on it. He just kind of did this post. So um, bottom line here, Bellwood no longer involved whatsoever. Uh, the ICO FUD scam uh, didn't involve Jasmine. It most likely didn't involve Bellwood either. We, we were never able to tie that actually to Bellwood. Um, so I, I don't think there was any truth to that, though it is possible that that account that I mentioned did get scammed because people get scammed all the time. Um, and overall, I think this is a good post to clear that up. So hopefully that puts that to bed. Jasmine is owned by the management of Jasmine, which is a really good thing, right? Moving on. All right. So I put this post out there because um, I, I had seen quite a few questions about it. Uh, so Jasmine deflationary mechanism, right? So I've talked about this a bunch of times, but this is basically it. Platinum data utilization businesses, P-dubs, P-dubs locking up coins. So target is 70% lockup, 35 billion coins. When this process starts is quarter four, 2023, Jasmine becomes deflationary. And so this image that I took right here, which uh, by the way, here's the uh, um, Jasmine Clubhouse version of me, which is totally awesome. Big shout out to uh, Tycho Tweets for creating that. He is a... Uh, Quite, quite the master artist. Um, and uh, by the way, check out that AMA, uh, you know, and check out the uh, Jasmine Clubhouse. Uh, but I put that on here. I put this, this was taken early on from, I think it was with maybe the Jasmine League. Um, and this is the chart projection of what this should look like. And then at the end here, this period of market establishment. Now, it's slightly different than this chart because of how fast the market maker released the coins, right? So basically all these coins are out there at this point. But what's really important here is it says the undis undistributed balance of Jasmine coin will disappear due to the increase in data utilization businesses, P-dubs, right? With the disappearance of the undistributed amount, Data utilization business will purchase Jasmine coin from the market. The amount of Jasmine coin in the market will decrease as data utilization business purchase Jasmine coin in the market. Basically the same thing. Okay. So how does this work, right? You know, and I, I've seen a couple of questions of people saying, you know, how do I wrap my head around this, right? Uh, how does this make sense? And so Hara has said previously through AMA that the lockup is going to be based on the Japanese yen, but purchased in Jasmine coin, okay? So the price of Jasmine coin doesn't matter. That's the, that's the important part. It's based on the yen, that's what matters. So however much data, uh, and, and what, what this actual schedule or chart is, no one knows, we haven't seen this. This hasn't been posted anywhere, okay? Could it be posted in the future? Possibly, but is it relevant to somebody like a retail investor? Not really. All, all it's really relevant to is the businesses, okay? So when they lock up coins, they're locking it up based on the yen, based on a value of the Japanese yen, they would purchase that much Jasmine coin. Excuse me, from there, they, they lock it up into the ecosystem, and then that is taken out of the supply for a year, maybe longer, right? It, it really just kind of depends on how long that business wants to access the platinum data. Remember, what is Jasmine 
selling? Well, Jasmine is selling platinum data. What is platinum data? Well, platinum data is data provided by users. They're then incentivized with DD points with Jasmine coin to provide their data. And then Jasmine applies edge AI and gets inferences to make it platinum data, right? So I've talked about this before, smart marketing versus like dumb marketing, right? I think of dumb marketing like Super Bowl ads. It's just one ad that kind of goes out to, you know, 50 million people, whatever. It's not targeted. Well, what you can do when you have that specific data is highly valuable. Data is the new oil, okay? Data, the value of data is going to go up exponentially as time goes on. And it's projected to, especially as there are more Internet of Things devices. Basically, all these random devices all around the house that are connected to the Internet. As those continue to increase, the value of data will continue to increase. And so what is Jasmine selling? They're selling platinum data, data that has had AI look at it, provide inferences, and then can sell that to that business who is participating in Jasmine by locking up those coins and now has access to the data. Um, that is how this whole thing works. That That's the idea here, okay? So in this uh, period of market establishment, we've seen in the 2023 roadmap that it goes live fourth quarter, the data marketplace. That's what kicks off this whole thing. Now, how fast those coins are pulled out of the market to be determined. We don't know yet, okay? Now, what we do know is that Jasmine has some massive partners, okay? Transcosmos, a billion dollar company. Um, Travala and Booking.com, if they are getting involved in this on the uh, in the way that the Nippon Travel Agency is, which they should, it makes a ton of sense, uh, that could pull out a ton of coins. Basically, all these coins are then locked into the ecosystem, just as they would be if you had a proof of stake coin, like a Cardano or something like that, and you staked it, and now that coin is no longer in the circulating supply. So the point is when you go to Coin Market Cap, for example, and it says that there's 50 billion coins and all but 2.4 billion plus 30 million have been released. Well, all that amount that's been released isn't actually in the circulating supply if those businesses have it locked up in the ecosystem. That's the point. So that's what makes this thing deflationary in the fourth quarter, right? So hopefully that kind of clears that up in terms of how this whole thing is intended to work. Now, how many businesses are involved in it? Um, how many are going to start? Uh, what what the actual chart looks like on uh, you know what's the value of the data that, that Jasmine is charging uh, for them to purchase those coins and lock them up? I don't know. No one does. We haven't seen that yet. You know that might be something good to ask in the uh, March AMA, um, but we haven't seen that yet. So the the point though in all of this is that what's in this chart here is a goal. This is a projection. All of the goals are based on 2026. It's only 2023, right? So we got 2024, 2025, 2026. So we still have a few years till we get to the ultimate goal that they have right here, which is basically 70% locked up. Um, now, could that happen sooner? Sure. Um, might it take a little time? Maybe. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that kind of play into this, but... What's really important is that Jasmine has really strong government support uh, in Japan in particular. So they're in the National Carbon Credit Consortium. There's multiple local governments in there. They had the road test in uh, Hokkaido. Local governments are involved. Uh, Ando is involved in various government boards. I saw a post by Lil Bidman this past week where uh, I think he said that uh, Sato had, had done a speech at parliament. So there's, there's numerous government um, connections here that all tie into their national data strategy and smart cities, et cetera, et cetera. So where it goes from here, it could align with those timeframes, okay? But um, in Japan, the companies operate through a uh, various consortiums, consortium, however you want to say it, right? <laughs> consortium, uh, Koretsu, that's the Japanese term for it 
where you have multiple companies that work together towards the same goal. Okay. So that's kind of how Jasmine is tied into all these various different companies that, you know, they're tied into Sony, um, Honda, um, you know, Panasonic, right? There, there's a bunch of really big ones, Intel Japan, that they're tied back into. Um, and I think a lot of that happens through these, these partnerships that are going on under the surface. And so the bottom line here is that hopefully that explains it, that it gets deflationary fourth quarter, um, but it's, it's not going to instantly lock up, you know, 70% uh, of the supply and, you know, uh, October 1st. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that that's when it starts. So over the course of that time, should it start to lock up more and more and more? It should, right? So that's kind of the big uh, deflationary mechanism that we are all watching. Now, um, moving on up from there, th this is probably worth mentioning here uh, because this does impact the Jasmine chart this week and kind of everything that's going on. Um, had, Myself, just like many others out there, woke up today to this huge FUD storm here. And essentially, this is the story. So three U.S. senators, we have Elizabeth Warren, Chris Van Hollen, and Roger Marshall, uh, accused CZ of fraud and money laundering based on, and what do they base it on? They base it on numerous internet articles, uh, the majority of which came from Reuters, uh, not any kind of actual evidence, right? And they send this letter uh, to CZ, they CC Gary Gensler, the people's champ. <laughs> they they put Merrick Garland on there, the attorney general, you know, and uh, there was somebody else in there for the uh, uh, Commodities and Trading Commission, right? Head of that. So, um, you know, here's kind of how I view this. So whenever a government official tells me they're looking out for me, uh, I instantly have kind of a BS alert going on in my head. Like BS alarm is like, Jesse, that's not it. <laughs> so, um, you know, here's the thing with politicians. Now, th this is just my own opinion, right? So politicians are very um, self-absorbed, okay? And usually what they do uh, is directly tied to them somehow. And it's directly tied into their kind of narcissism, their want for acceptance. This this is Jesse, the psych major talking, right? Um, you know, they got to win the popularity contest, right? And for some reason, Elizabeth Warren, which ironically, when Elizabeth Warren, for those who don't know, uh, before she was a politician, she went on Bill Maher's show on HBO. And she actually had a pretty good, you know, uh, some, some decent sound bites, you know, at the time, okay? And at the time, I remember thinking, well, you know, it kind of seems like she knows what she's doing. And then later she got into office and <laughs> it's it's kind of like gone downhill from there. Um, now, me personally, I, I am just a independent thinker. That's it. Right. I'm not right. I'm not left. I'm just me. Right. I just kind of look at everything on the facts and kind of make up my mind. Um, I, I don't really understand this, how... Elizabeth Warren is sort of like hell bent against crypto, uh, but by all accounts, it appears that she is. She's she's very kind of hell bent against crypto, and so from that, she put out this letter, um, and it's basically tanked the whole market. Uh, you know, we've plummeted through support levels and all these things. Um, you know, because quote uh, they're looking out for us, right? Thanks. <laughs> you know, I think I can look out for myself, you know, and uh, as I've talked about in other videos recently, you know, like Jesse Powell over at Kraken, had a Kraken, uh, has, has said that, you know, he feels like Gary Gensler is gaslighting him, right? Because what they've said all along uh, for any of the U.S. based institutions is they said, give us a framework and we'll operate it by it, right? But when you don't give us a framework and then you just tell us we're doing it wrong, but you don't tell us what doing it right is, then it's really hard to be compliant, right? So that's true. So here in the U.S., you know, we we just we we can't get any legislation around this. I think I think part of the problem is simply the politicians don't understand crypto. First of all, um, there's a few of them that are trying to understand it and trying to get Bitcoin. I get that. 
uh, but as a whole, I don't think they get it. And they, what you'll find is they don't ever ask the constituents. They don't ever like poll poll people or get a group together of you know, industry, you know, uh, influencers, um, you know, all the CEOs, all that stuff. They they never bring them together and say, let's make this better. How can we do this? Uh, let's have a positive conversation. They don't do that. Instead, they simply kind of do this like finger pointing thing, like, yeah, we got you, right? And it really kind of shows you how they, they don't get it. Uh, so for example, on this one, you know, they're accusing CZ of, you know, fraud, money laundering, whatever. Um, okay, so first of all, money laundering in blockchain is like uh, contrary, okay? Uh, there is a blockchain trail of every single transaction. If you're going to launder money in blockchain, you're a complete moron, all right? Uh, this is not the way to launder money is in blockchain, all right? So so that, that just making that statement alone kind of tells me like, eh, I don't know if you know what you're talking about, right? Um, then I, I can see the angle that they take of, well, you've got offshore holdings, you know? Uh, your stuff is offshore. Yeah, that's true. And so is a lot of other businesses are offshore. You know, does anyone remember the Panama Papers where basically every rich person in the U.S. hides their money in Panama? I mean, come on. You know, so really they're targeting Binance because FTX fell apart. Now, FTX has some really odd connections, Sam does, to Gary Gensler uh, and that whole group there, which I've posted about and talked about before. Uh, so it's sort of weird how they they kind of give FTX a bit of a a pass, but then they're going after CZ. And I think the thing is that CZ is a big target. I get it. Binance is the biggest target in terms of exchanges. Okay, fine. Um, and maybe they could do some things to be more compliant. That's probably true, right? But again, just like with Jesse Powell and Kraken, you have to actually tell them what compliance is. Give them the framework of compliance. They haven't done that. They simply just accuse and point fingers and, you know, under the guise of um, protecting consumers, which uh, you're, you're not really protecting consumers. <laughs> so anyhow, that is what has caused this recent FUD storm that has absolutely tanked uh, our chart. So I want to show that, what that looks like. So over here at CoinMarketCap, so here's a chart. Look, look at this. Fell off a cliff, right? This is clearly um, a Bitcoin pairs fall off. So um, I've talked about this a lot that uh, Jasmine is tied to Bitcoin through Bitcoin pairs. Bitcoin is like the moon and Jasmine is in the tides. Okay. So however close the moon is to the planet Earth determines the tides high or low, kind of when they happen, right? And how big that tide is. Um, it's the exact same thing with Bitcoin. And so Bitcoin basically dropped us off a cliff here uh, with this latest um, FUD uh, that is coming courtesy of uh, Elizabeth Warren, right? To uh, protect consumers. She's tanking the market. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, great. Um, so that's kind of what's going on here. Now, if we look at the Jasmine chart, so here's the chart. Um, here's all our support lines, where we were, et cetera. Now, what's interesting here is when we fell through this support all the way down to here, if you look down here, that's it's on almost no volume, okay? Which tells me, again, that this is due to Bitcoin pairs. So over time, as businesses, the P-dubs, lock up those Jasmine coin, hopefully this um, impacts Jasmine less and less and less. But right now, and before that time, it does impact us. On really low volume, it can tank our chart, which is exactly what happened. And, you know, th this is the problem with um, uh, technical analysis, okay? Um, it is, it, it's following... Uh, patterns, we're trying to chart out what we think should happen, could happen, right? But it doesn't always happen because you have these random events, high and low, that sort of come out of nowhere um, that can impact a chart like this. And so when you're looking at a coin like a Jasmine or anything else, you know, you're, you've are you got to do your own research and you've got to do some TA, technical analysis. But 
TA is only half of the equation, right? So you can't just follow TA. There's a lot of uh, technical analysis accounts on Twitter, ton of YouTube pages that this is all they do. And it, it really only gets you so far, right? So, I mean, I do it also. I mean, you, you need to do it so you know what's going on roughly. But even still, you can have these events that just tear everything down. And so what happened here, we basically fell through this support level right up here of uh, 0.05. We fell all the way down to uh, 0.0050, and now we're all the way up to 0.0054. So we're sort of rebounding now off that latest FUD. But like I said, you look at the volume, it's next to nothing, which tells me this is Bitcoin-related FUD, all right? Now, zooming out from there, looking at the RSI, look at this. We have been trending down up until right about here, we bottomed out, right? So we've technically been oversold on Jasmine since mid-February. It is now March 3rd. So over two weeks, we have been uh, basically oversold on Jasmine. So uh, we are due for a rebound, right? Um, looking at the uh, market cipher B, you can kind of see the momentum we're down here. You can see the, you know, the, our inflow is kind of right at about baseline here. We're still positive at the moment, but barely. Again, this is from those Bitcoin pairs. And that's kind of what's driving the chart at the moment. Now, it is relevant to look at the Bitcoin chart so you know um, the role that this is playing, right? So on the market cipher B, we do have a red dot here, which usually is indicative of you know high selling, right? So that's that influence that impacted Jasmine. Uh, up here, we are oversold. Okay, so that's going on. And then if we look a little closer here, you can see we were all the way up here. We kind of fell down through this trend line. We kind of, you know, kind of came right down to here. Um, we didn't go all the way down, though, to this this level of roughly 21.6, right? So we're still between 21.6 and 24.8, let's say. So if we can rebound from here, we can still kind of hold our own and keep trending upward, which I think there are numerous factors in the Bitcoin chart that have sort of suppressed it as of late. And that's kind of what's going on here. All right. So um, the bottom line here with Jasmine is that Bitcoin has the whole market red. Reason why is Elizabeth Warren's letter that is there to uh, save us all. Th thanks. <laughs> thanks. Just, just like the people's champ, Gary Gensler is looking out for us. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate you too. Uh, you know, a former Goldman Sachs banker is looking out for you. Right. Uh, I got it. So um, anyhow, that that's kind of where things are at. Now, going back over to CoinMarketCap, just wanted to take a look at uh, the holder uh, information right now. So if you go into the more info, where are we at? We're roughly at about 45,188. So here is our chart. You know, we had a dip here where we dropped off a little bit, and then we've been rebounding ever since here in Mount Jasmine. Um, that's how it goes. You know, really, we're looking at the long-term uh, projections here. This is a long-term coin. This isn't, you know, a get-rich-quick scam, something like that. This is a long-term um, investment if you choose to get into it. So bottom line is that's what we got right now in the uh, weekly update. And I'm going to wrap this video up with some final thoughts. All right. For this video's final thoughts, I wanted to talk about the scammers, the FUD, and the bigger picture. So first of all, these scammers are really out in full effect right now. I mean, I have never had so many people uh, mimicking my profile and trying to scam my followers. Uh, I had multiple people reach out this past week. I have, uh, I don't know, five to 10 doppelgangers out there that are you know, impersonating me and trying to rip people off. I know one of my followers uh, that did get ripped off by them, um, the want, they wanted them to invest in an exchange or something. I've known others that have had like full on conversations with them because they thought it was me. Uh, I will never message you directly, okay? If you message me, I'd be happy to talk to you to answer your questions, but I will never message you directly. Um, outside of that, I will never ask you to invest into an exchange. I will never ask you to call me on WhatsApp. Um, you know, I don't even talk like the way that these scammers talk, right? Uh, something else is that all these profiles are mimicking mine. They add all these underscores. They spell my uh, handle wrong. You know, they misspell finance over and over and over again. 
Um, my YouTube comments are full of bots that like to respond. I have probably blocked over a thousand accounts uh, of bots. I've reported them as spam. I hide them from the channel and every single week there's new ones, all right? So just please be really careful with that. Um, there are also, you know, various scams that come out. Uh, Telegram is infested with them as well as a few other areas. Now, outside of that, there are some actual real things that did happen, did transpire. There was the giveaway with Travala, that is real. And there's also the giveaway with Jasmine US and Patrick Schmidt, that one is also real. So those are actually verified, okay? Now, regarding the FUD, ton of FUD that's leading to a lot of volatility in the market. Uh, Bitcoin really wants to take off right now. And instead, you know, now we have this latest sort of uh, black swan, uh, you know, pothole that we've just run through, which is this letter from Elizabeth Warren and the two other senators. Uh, now, I am always just highly skeptical when whenever anybody in government says they've got my best interest. I, I just most people do not operate that way. It is very rare to find somebody that uh, is looking out for the greater good. Uh, most people look out for themselves. Okay, that's that's just the reality of it. But um, in these politicians, you know, you, you do kind of wonder, like, what angle are they going for here? You're sending this kind of accusatory letter to finance to CZ. You're accusing them of money laundering and fraud, yet you, you don't provide any actual investigative proof. Uh, all you do is cite a million articles, right, uh, written on the internet by whoever, um, and we don't know what their sources were or how in-depth they went, right? You're just kind of randomly citing all these things to frame a narrative that works for what you're doing, okay? Um, now, I've said it before, and I'll say it again, that first of all, if you're going to launder money, uh, blockchain's probably not the best idea because it is a chain of blocks that record every transaction, so laundering money in blockchain is, is very, very, very difficult, okay? Um, now, why the largest exchange in the world and one of the richest people on the planet would want to launder money or have to launder money or have any inkling of laundering money is, is just ridiculous, all right? Th that's not what's going on here. Um, I think the problem that's going on is simply there needs to be a framework. There is no framework. Uh, the regulators are trying to regulate based on outdated policies that really don't apply very well. It's the spare peg in the r round hole, you know, that's, that's kind of what we're dealing with here. And because of that, it's creating all this crazy volatility. Um, I do think this is just a little bump in the road and things will kind of turn around from here. And, you know, with crypto in general, um, you know, I think there's been a greater focus on going after these exchanges after so many have failed. But it is kind of ironic, you got to admit, that you don't really see them sending this, this accusatory letter and all this stuff um, over to SBF, right? Uh, he's kind of, you know, out on bail, the, the craziest bail ever posted. He's just out and it's all good. And, you know, Gary Gensler is his former... Uh, professor at MIT and, you know, whatever, right? We'll just slide that under the rug. Uh, but now we'll go after, you know, big bad Binance because they're the biggest target. So um, overall, you know, are there some things that Binance could probably do better? Sure. You know, maybe the truth is somewhere in the middle. Uh, is Binance the, the large company offshore? Is it separate from Binance US? Yes, they've done that legally, right? Um, you know, I think simply they're just kind of the biggest target in the room, right? Uh, there is tons of U.S. money that goes offshore, uh, you know, obviously in, in things like the Panama Papers, Bermuda, the Cayman Islands. You can go right down the list of, you know, everywhere everyone tries to hide their money. Um, but ultimately, is, is this something where they're taking advantage of consumers or misleading con consumers? I, I would argue to the opposite. I think Binance, out of all the exchanges, has tried to go out above and beyond and really kind of tell the consumers what they're doing. Now, you could look in the various failures like Voyager and Celsius. Did they do that? Not at all. Um, so yes, th there, there's probably some regulation that needs to be there, uh, but just sending this, this random letter based on internet articles to, to CZ and you know, wanting him to come into the, the Senate and, and just get lambasted by you for you know, a week is ridiculous. You know, uh, it kind of reminds me of uh, Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg. 
that every time you see him up there in front of Congress, he just looks miserable and he just gets like a good flogging for like a week straight. And I always think to myself, why on earth is he still in this role? Like if I was Zuckerberg, I, I would have just called it a day, left, taken all my money and somebody else can get flogged in front of Congress. <laughs> So I don't really see CZ coming in. You know, he's a Canadian citizen. And, you know, they always kind of tie everything back to, you know, oh, he has this connection to China. No, he doesn't. You know, he's a Canadian citizen. Come on. You, you know, it's, it's, it's very ill-informed what they're doing. Um, so what it means for Jasmine and what it means this week is that it, it kind of broke us through one of our support levels. We kind of got to regain things. Um, the opportunity that's presented is obviously a buying opportunity. Uh, as I showed you earlier, fourth quarter is when we become deflationary. So really now until then is kind of your window to do whatever it is you're going to do here. Um, because after that, you're going to be chasing FOMO. That's what's going to happen, right? Chasing FOMO fourth quarter. Okay. So, um, that's it for this week's video. I know there was a ton in it, but hopefully it made sense. If you got any comments, by all means, leave them. Uh, leave me comments on Twitter. Uh, I'd love to respond to them, the real me, not the fake me. So keep an eye out for that and uh, you know, get you those answers that you're looking for. All right, so as always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button. Don't forget that I'm on Twitter at KIR Finance, where you can find me tweeting and retweeting, so check me out there. You can also follow this QR code, it takes you over to my website. I've got my financial blog there, various ways. If you want to support the channel, that you can. Uh, if not, that's fine too, it's, it's all in there. And other than that, um, as always, for a friendly reminder, this is Jesse with Keeping It Real Finance, the channel that always says you're back. Tells it like it is, because honestly, uh, you know, uh, that's, that's just the way I do things. I tell it like it is, right? I, I've got a, a bit of an altruistic view of the world. Um, where I myself have been, you know, ripped off uh, too many times on <laughs> different things and lied to and whatever. That, uh, you know, I'm telling it like it is. That's, that's the way it works on this channel. So, uh, as always, make sure to follow me on all those accounts, and I will see you on the next one. Later.